Hey, today we're in Griffin, Georgia, here at an 1800s old cotton mill. And you want to see what's inside this building. It's incredible. Have you ever heard of a Thunderstang, for one? There's a beautiful old Cadillac four-door sedan hot rod that was built for Davy Allison. And many, many more cars coming up next on Griot's Garage Treasures. to another edition of Griot's Garage Treasures. And folks, Sam and I have found ourselves here in Griffin, Georgia, here in an old cotton mill. Absolutely, this place was built in the 1800s. It had a tornado that destroyed it and was built back, but this is a collection here from a guy named Woody Heath. Let's see if he's around. Oh, looks like the doors are closed. Hey, Woody, can we come in? Hey, come on in, man. All right. Man, that's a big door. We're going to clear this? I guess you got to have those protect all the... You have to protect and keep everybody out. So what are you working on here? What's this? Well, this is an old 48 Cadillac Sedanette, which many people didn't like, but took it and completely redone the car with a 454 big block. It's got a B&M blower on it. Wow. 700R transmission, Cadillac Escalade interior. Uh, just a phenomenal car. You can drive to California. Matter of fact, the car was born in California and came this way. Really? <laughs> you know, just looking at it with the hood down, you know, it's an old sleeper, right? This, this is my kind of car. This is my meat, and it sits nice and low. Look at the way this thing sits. Got beautiful wheels on it. Speaking right. of your kind of car, I found one over here I want to take a look at. <laughs> well, let's look this car over. The finish is beautiful. And you know, this sedan, that body going down, sometimes they call them torpedo backs. Look at this. The trim is all beautiful, got a lot of stainless on it. Ah, you can see now the Escalade leather interior. A nice wood wheel, billet, tilt column. Now, what I notice here is you got CD player and you got original gauges. The gauges were fixed to work with that engine. That big block with an overdrive, what's it got for rear? Probably a nine inch. Eh, nine inch forward. It's a little bit unusual, but it's pretty neat. You know, as a kid, I worked in a fueling station. Pushed the button on the tail light, the tail light came up, and here was your fuel filler right here. You Take your cap off, put the nozzle in there. You know, Cadillac was famous for hiding it in all different places. Well, Sam, you're definitely showing your age. Folks, here's what I found. This is the Acme Express. This is a 1925 Ford C cab. Now, this is a national prize winner. It's all plastic. It's an example of the old hot rod, what, 20 or 30 years ago. What it has is a Chevrolet 400 cubic inch engine in it. It's got dual four barrel Harley carburetors up here. It's got brass radiator down here. This chassis looks like it might be a total performance. It's got a spring front on it, leaf springs up front. You can see the interior is nicely done. This is a typical street rod at the time, like a tea bucket. And in the back, it's got a Jag rear end. The Jaguar, which had disc brakes in the older days, which had also put disc brakes on the front, gave this car a lot better stopping power than most of your backyard street machines. This car was professionally built, I don't know where, in some shop, but it was built to drive. It has four-wheel discs, like I said, the full Jag in the back, has plenty of power, and handles real well. Pretty little hot rod, they were fun to drive. Like I said, this is a national prize winner. I like this little car. Well, Davey, I'm hanging out over here with what looks like some of your buddies. I think I've seen these guys hanging out in your garage, but what I found is what I really like, big car. Look at this Cadillac. This is a 1930 Cadillac, big four-door sedan. Look at the wheelbase in this thing. That's gotta be like 150 inches or more. And it's really, really done well. Got a nice red paint job on it, some subtle stripes. It's got a big block Chevy motor in it. The grill, the headlights. Look at the size of the headlights in this, they're massive. Everything's triple chrome plated. That's just an absolutely outstanding example of what Cadillac was all about back then with the big horns, the lights, the lights on the fenders. Got a nice cloth top on this thing. If you look inside, nice leather interior, bucket's got a billet tilt column. You know, got the low car pedals and shifter and everything. This is just Really, really a beautiful car. Big, you could take a lot of people cruising with you. Uh-oh, can Uncle Sam here as a passenger? This is like a limo, this is a beautiful car. It'll be fun to drive down the road. I bet you there's a nice story behind this thing. This car I chased for about a year. I did not really realize it was really Davy Allison's. I just wanted the car. Uh, it went to Daytona. A friend of mine, which about his, has passed away now. I traded him out of it. This car was built for Davy Allison up in North Carolina, one of the North Carolina street rod shops. It's probably one of the finest cars I got in my collection. It's all big block Chevrolet, it's all steel. It's just a fine quality piece of car that you can really enjoy and proud to have. See, my mother always wanted me to learn to play the piano. Well, 
I never really did, but this is about as close as I came to it. Anyway, we, there's a lot of stuff here in this museum. Player pianos, stuffed animals, you name it. We're going to show you a lot more cars, though, right after this message. Stay with us. This edition of Rio's Garage Treasures is being brought to you by Rio's Garage, car care for the perfectionist. And by ARP, the world leader in fastener technology. And by Advance Auto Parts, service is our best part. Welcome back to Griot's Garage Treasures, and I'm right back here, right around ragtime, and there's an Indian sitting over here in the corner. This place has everything in the world in it, including this beautiful little 1960 El Camino. I guess this is the second year for the El Caminos, but this one has really been tricked out. If you look back here, you can see these massive slicks on the back. This thing has got big tubs in here. The interior is pretty stock, nothing spectacular in there, but if you look up front, you can see that it's got a nice paint job on it, got the 50 style flames on it, but here's the business end. This has got a big block Chevrolet in it with a Wyan supercharger on it, dual Carter AFB carburetors on this, and this supercharger is overdriven, so this guy is looking for performance, and he's going to get it with this one. I was sitting here one day, and a real good friend of mine, Floyd, brought that car down on a truck. I looked at it, I said, Floyd, that's a beautiful car. I said, but I'm not sure that's really a nice car. I said, I'll come on inside the building, let's see what I can trade you. Well, when the day was over, I had traded a nice cord for an El Camino with a blower. <laughs> that was the day I went brain dead, but me and Floyd's been trading 40 years, so it was his turn. <laughs> Isn't that a beautiful little car? 1960 El Camino, man. They don't make them like that anymore. And speaking of not making them like that anymore, they don't make Sam like that anymore either. Where is he? You know, as time goes on, steel cars are getting rarer and rarer. This is a 32 Ford Coupe, a Deuce Coupe. It's a five window, period correct. This thing is beautiful, it's super paint on it. It hasn't been chopped up. It's got a chrome dropped I-beam axle with a four and a half inch drop on it. Beautiful headlights. Of course, it's got the side panels. It's fully fended. They didn't chop the roof. Windshield's got a nice chrome frame on it. It still opens. This guy was looking for some power. He's got a nice built small block here with coated headers, dual quads. This is probably one of my personal cars I like better than any car I have in the museum. It's an all steel 32, which is most men's dream to have a steel 32. You can't say much about it. There's been a lot of upgrades done to it with the top, was filled in with a station wagon top. Just a fine car, something you enjoy driving, something you enjoy going to shows. Uh, it's just not much you can say. And the car is just gorgeous. It sits right, got really big tires in the back, beautiful wheels, nice interior, tastefully done with the V8 in the middle. And being a five window, you can put the seat back further, gives you a lot more room for a tall guy than a three window and you've got a good visibility. Even has a traffic minder, which is a prism. And you just look at that and you can see the traffic light. Beautiful car, done well, nice swoop on the rear fenders, great chrome, nice bumpers. This is the kind of car that would be perfect for me to take home throw my little dog Lucy in it and go cruising down the road. Look what I found over here. This is a 1953 Jaguar Mark 7. Hey, everybody thinks Jaguar makes the roadsters and the sports cars, which they do, but they also made sedans, and Queen Elizabeth probably rode in one like this at one time. But in this particular case, what they've done is they've taken it and cleaned it up, made it look nice. Now, these cars are kind of prone to rust. What they have done here is here on the top, you have a sunroof. They fill this in so it doesn't leak any more. This right here, this is a little air vent, so you can pop that up, get fresh air coming into the cabin. Same thing on the side over there on the fender. A couple other things they've done on each side, there's a little door to put the gas in the car. It had dual tanks. Again, these were prone to rust. The gas tank is here in the trunk. Something else I like about these old Jags is they have this full fender skirt here. It covers almost the entire wheel. You have to take this off to get the wheel off. But up front in the engine compartment is where it's a little bit bit different. This has got a fuel injected Chevrolet engine in it. This way they have the reliability. A lot of people didn't like working on the six cylinder Jaguar engines for some reason. They didn't think they were that good. They were actually great engines, but because they were a foreign engine, sometimes mechanics couldn't deal with that. I bought this car because I love Jaguars. And I also love the Chevrolet running gear. But I am going to take this car and do all the braking lines down through here, back through here, all in black would it be a two-tone car. Bring out more elegance in it. You can go places. 
plus we can also use it for weddings and uh, as, as for limousine services. They also redid the interior. It makes it a little bit more comfortable. It does have the wood grain dash, but it's a nice driver. I think something like this could be a lot of fun to have. It's a nice, comfortable car to drive. An old friend of mine had one, and he put a Chevy in it, and he used to call it his Jaguar. Okay, Lucy, just settle down there. I don't want this bear to bite my leg. And look, sweetheart, I mean, you're a nice gal, and you got great eyelashes, but my fries were cold. That's not gonna work, don't bring me cold fries. You know, if you remember back in the 50s, you got the car hops, you pull in, push a button, talk to the speaker, a gal like this would come out, this is a great man that can complete to the roller skates. Bring the food right up to your car, and of course, if you had a convertible, it was even better, you never left the comfort of your car, and you could get some lunch. And speaking of lunch, I think uh, Davey has gone to get some lunch. treasures and there's a lot of treasures in this garage and I noticed this sign here that if you hit this sign that you'll hit that plane so obviously if they drive something by or somebody tall walks by you'll hit the gear on this looks like a kit plane got fabric covered wings and body got a big rugged landing gear look at that and it's got hydraulic disc brakes somebody's probably had some fun in it but if you look at the front it's got a nice wooden four-bladed propeller and a four-cylinder Volkswagen engine now when you take an automotive engine and use it in an airplane you gotta be real careful because you don't want to exceed 2,800, 3,000 RPM. You go much faster than that. The tips of the propellers break the sound barrier and you shatter propellers. This looks pretty rugged. It's got no uh, flaps. It's just got ailerons and a vertical stabilizer and an elevator. I'll bet you somebody had some fun in this. And looks like it's got some weeds in it in a couple places. I'll bet you there's a lot of story behind this airplane. A real good friend of mine, Barry, called me from Alabama. His good friend had this airplane. He flew it everywhere. Well. One day, he started to take off. He got up a little ways, quit running, went down. He called Barry, he said, Barry, I'm gonna sell you this airplane. My buddy Barry called me at six o'clock in the morning, and says, Woody, I got something you want. A Volks plane. I said, what's a Volks plane? And this is what I ended up with. You know, if you ever watch the old classic movies and you watch the gangster movies, you'll probably see a car like this in it. This is a 1947 Lincoln Continental. This is all original, by the way. Well, it looks like it's got the original paint on it, all original interior in it. It has a V12 engine. About 20 years ago, I was coming back from Panama City, got lost, went through this little town, and this car was sitting in front of a mansion. Well, me, I will stop and go up to anybody's door and ask about an old car. They did not want to sell a car, but I gave them my number and an old card. Believe it or not, 20 years later, they called me. And I went down, and I was really sad because all the tires was flat. It was just covered with dirt. It was really, it was really heartbreaking. I bought the car, brought it back, and this is the stage I've got in now. I have not had time to do a lot of work to it, but it's going to be really a nice collector's piece. These were really luxurious cars, and back in the day, the story was is you either had to be really wealthy or probably really crooked to afford one of these cars. But here you can see the V12 engine in it. Looks like it has a two-barrel Stromberg carburetor in it. But look at this. you got dual horns up here, so I'm sure that can get somebody's attention when you lay on the horn. Something else I noticed, too, if you look inside, you see these vents here on each side, the louvers. What this does is this helps helps allow air circulate through here, so it helps keep this engine a little bit cooler. You notice there's no door handle on this. What you do is you push in like so, and the door opens. And here you can see what the interior all looks like. It's all beautiful in there, the original steering wheel. Here's the fender skirt that came on it. This fits right up in here. You have to take this off in order to get the wheel off. And of course, in the back is the Continental kit. These cars are luxury for their time, and even today they make a great street rod if you want to make it modern. You know, I love these chopped cars, especially when they're really slammed to the ground. Look at this Mercury. Look at this big, long, sloping deck, and of course, it's been decked. It's got the 49 Plymouth-style bumpers, nice exhaust coming out through there, some really neat taillights, and if you look up here, it's got a wonderful chop, and this chop is accentuated by 3D graphics. I found this beautiful little car at Daytona Turkey Rod Run. I had a beautiful 61 Corvette that I hated because it was so terrible to drive. I want to talk to this man, Tom, which I realized I'd known him for a long time, and I ended up trading for this car. I really love it. It's a fine piece of equipment. 
You know, you can see the chop, a just beautiful job and a lot of workmanship here. Look at the way they arched this window and the quarter window. Got a nice piece of wide stainless here. That's a gorgeous piece of work. Shaved door handles, nice swan neck mirror style. And of course, these spots are not dummies, they're real spots. If you look inside, it's got your roll and pleated interior, bucket seats with a console armrest. There's a Ford floor shift, automatic floor shift. Pretty good sized back seat for a car this size. Of course, can't be real tall with this chop, picks a lot of the headroom away. But look at the lines of this car, big swoopy fenders, a beautiful hood on there, comes down to the original Mercury grille. And again, kind of the same compliment, the three bar bumpers in the front, like a 49 Plymouth. Now this is a real lead sled cruiser. It's got a big 351 in it, air conditioning, power steering, beautiful interior. You can have a lot of fun cruising down the road, going to shows, and just going to the mall shop. All right, buddy, you think this is an unusual ride? Wait till we come back. We're going to show you a Thunder Stag. Stay with us. This edition of Griot's Garage Treasures is being brought to you by Griot's Garage, car care for the perfectionist, and by Ram Air SS, performance specialties, and by Quick Latch, made in the USA. Welcome back to Griot's Garage Treasures. Boy, I found a treasure here. Now, what do you do if you got a fair amount of time, fair amount of money, certain amount of creativity, and a 58 Thunderbird? Well, here's what some guys did. They took this Thunderbird and they decided to upgrade it with modern conveniences, like a Mustang engine. Modular motor in here, air conditioning in it, all the fuel injection on it. Same thing with the drivetrain, the suspension on this, making it a real runner. And if you go here inside, they continue the Mustang theme even farther by putting a Mustang interior in here. This will pop up. And of course, the convertible top folds down in here. This is what they call the Thunder Stang. And there's quite a story behind it. A friend of mine, Doug Michaels, up in Helen, Georgia, got this car from Meekum. On the dash, Carol Shelby had signed his name, saying that he was really proud of such a piece of equipment with the Mustang running gear in it. Well, Doug, being 70 years old, he thought the dash was scratched up. He sanded it down and had a more height. But I do have the collector's certificate with Carol Shelby's signature that, that notarized that that was true. But other than that, the car speaks for itself. You know, you think when you got a screw in your tire, you're having a bad day. Well, look at these little ET street slicks. Here's some screws right into, through the rim into the tire, like the original beadlock. Keeps the tire from turning on the rim. That usually means you have a lot of power, but look at this. It's a 63 Dodge, it's a 330, which is a cheap two-door post car, very light, didn't have a lot of equipment on it. When you think about no power accessories, not a lot of equipment, a light car, all of a sudden as a hot rodder, you start thinking, that's the car to go fast. A real good friend of mine, Ronnie, down in Panama City, him and his wife built the car. Unfortunately, at a young age, she passed away. She called, he called me and said, Woody, well, his car's gotta go away and I traded him some cars for it. Remember back in the early 60s, the 409s were tearing up the drag strip, Ford with the 406 Ford. Well, here's Chrysler's answer. You know, they had the Hemi, but this is a 426 wedge, got two big four barrels on it. Look at those factory exhaust manifolds doing like headers. Those are rare as hen's teeth right now. Electronic ignition, alternator, had lots of power. These cars rocked and rolled. And you look inside, just a cheap vinyl and fabric interior, but it's a business thing. Four speed, big Hurst shifter, sun tack with a gauge package. This was an awesome car. That 426 Max Wedge would scream down the drag strip. And you could order these with aluminum front ends, aluminum bumper, came with a three quarter ton Dodge truck rear end. Literally with those, you could unload them from the trailer, put a pair of slicks on them, set your tire pressure, and go drag racing. Griot's Garage wants you to have fun in your garage. Now, here's your car care tip of the week with Richard Griot. 
Hi, this week to make sure that you have fun in your garage, we're going to talk about Griot's Garage Leather Care products. Griot's Garage Leather Care products replenish vital nutrients to preserve and restore leather surfaces, but not all products are the same. Leather Care is a conditioner with a cleaning agent in it for maintaining well cared for leather. Leather Care and Leather Rejuvenator are interchangeable depending on the condition of the leather, and they should only be applied three to four times a year. Leather Spray and Leather Care Wipes, on the other hand, are mild and designed for quick cleaning and more regular tune-ups. Use them to clean up spills or for a quick nourishment after a wash. For older, neglected leather, use Leather Rejuvenator and its natural penetrating oils will revitalize and soften the pores deep down in the leather. Get started by cleaning the surface dirt off the leather using Interior Cleaner. Then apply the product to our blue detail sponge and work it into the leather. A little goes a long way. Allow the product to soak into the leather for several minutes, applying more onto areas where it soaks in quickly. If your leather really needs a deep feeding, apply a liberal amount to the leather and let it soak in overnight before buffing it off. Running your car's heater and parking it in the sun will warm the leather, allowing the product to penetrate deeper. When finished, use a clean cloth to buff excess off the surface. Repeat this procedure three or four times per year. And don't forget, our leather care products are great around the home for couches, belts, purses, even saddles, all so you can have fun in your garage. Well, Dave, it looks like you've found yourself a little 55 Chevy handyman wagon because this isn't a Nomad, it's a handyman. Got no trim on it, it's real nice. What are you talking about? 55 Chevy, it's a 56 Pontiac. It's not a Pontiac. It I says know my Pontiac cars, right up here. And my, my grandfather had one like this. I remember how it looked like. I remember the chrome here on the hood. From here back, it's 55 Chevy. Well, y'all might as well quit show. arguing, boys. Y'all are both wrong. This, oh no, I've never been uh, wrong. This is a yeoman. A yeoman? What's a yeoman? It was built in Canada. They took the back of a 55 Chevrolet, front of a 56 Pontiac. Cheapest station wagon to ever been built on the market. The reason why it got the name yeoman, the designer's name was yeoman, so they called it a yeoman. So you got the best of both worlds. 56 Pontiac going that way, 55 Chevrolet coming this way. <laughs> How can you beat that? Oh, you can't. That is beautiful. You always find wild stuff in here. Well, you learn something here, that's for sure. Woody, we want to thank you, and especially your detail guys. I mean, they have done a terrific job. They must start at one end of this collection and work all the way through and then turn around and head back to stay up. What would you do without Armand and Mark keeping this place up? I'd quit. <laughs> <laughs> well, we want to thank you for letting us come in here you, and sir. spend some time. This has been a fantastic tour. You know, folks, if you want to have fun, have fun in your garage like Woody does. We've run out of time. We'll see you again next time here at Griot's Garage Treasures. Hold on.